the rear. The next is here, how long you can keep this mudra, namaste mudra? <laughs> well, she is, and now everyone is wonderful, so. Have you ever thought what is opposite of attachment, delusion, confusion in our life? You wake up every day in the morning and if you become aware of the mind, the way it thinks and speaks and acts, we will realize a kind of confusion is always there. So, I'm asking a simple question that what is opposite of attachment, delusion, and uh, confusion? We have nothing to do with the confusion in the society, in the political system. No, 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 not at all. What is the confusion inside? And why there is a confusion? So that confusion is because of absence of the right knowledge. So how to reach to the right knowledge, the power of discernment. So that is why we have been giving too much of emphasis on contemplation and reflection. I have to, I have to work on my mind. If I don't work on my mind, mind is definitely going to work. Now I have already worked for six months and a year. Now the habit will not work. Habit will not work. Remember this. Every day there is a new life, new situation, new condition, new thoughts, new feelings. So if we say that, oh, I have already worked for six months and now it is not helping me. It will not help. You don't say, I have, I have already uh, been eating for 10 years and let me give a break for a week. I've been breathing for since my birth, let me give a break. Not possible. So once the mind realizes this, that the opposite of attachment, delusion, and the confusion is the discernment that is present in the intellect, and I can bring it in the front by living consciously, the life is full of colors of peace and happiness. One thing, and the second thing, what happens when there is a confusion? Think of this. And that is how we live our daily life. What happens when there is a confusion? Or when there is a delusion, what happens? Either we are running away from someone, some situation, some condition, or we are attracted, we are running for something, someone in our life. And that causes the mind wandering and distract. Otherwise, there is no reason the mind will be wandering, distracted, deluded, and confused. Now, I've been doing the practice for 20 years. No, you can do that. But if the knowledge is not supporting the practice, nothing will happen. 
our masters are stressing again and again and again. I want that all of you should be an example to yourself. You have found the center and then see how the life moves. That life expresses itself in peace, happiness, joy all the time, which means there is an absence of confusion. An absence of confusion, the most important principle is the power of discernment. So once we understand the importance of this discernment, separating what is wrong with the right, real with the unreal, uh, then what happens? Then only we understand that by karma yoga we can purify the mind so when we start purification of the mind the next question comes are you living wisely are you living wisely at every moment in your personal life in your professional life in your social life living wisely means not living because of the ego and because of seeking the fruits of my action outside in my personal, professional, social life. I have done so much for you. You have done nothing for me. You know, these thoughts will never enter into your mind. You see, I started today's understanding that what exactly is the what is opposite of confusion in the delusion when there is a confusion there is bound to be an anxiety and stress and duality and a confusion so first is the purification of the mind that we have covered in many many sessions made it very clear and once we go deeper into the karma yoga, we will learn something. Second is known as the upasana. Upasana simply means that I can remove the projections from the life. I can remove those delusions from the life. Or in a single phrase, we can say that we should move from the emotional dependence or emotional bondage to the emotional freedom. So once there is the purification of the mind, we have moved from emotional dependence to emotional freedom. Then this mind is full of discernment. And at that moment, you simply listen to the teacher and you enter into the state of highest state of meditation. The three way, three steps. First is mandatory, second is also mandatory, and then the third, the mind flows with the wisdom, and we live, think, and speak and act in mindfulness 24 by 7. That is our goal. Why that is our goal? To bring an end to the suffering once and for all, to awaken to to awaken to that permanent peace and happiness. Then what? Then I can think, speak and act in my life, in my personal, professional life, social life. So I'm living a life that is joy of conscious living. It also influences others. It influences the society. It influences your relations. It influences your professional life. So now coming back to the second upasana or moving from the emotional bondage to the emotional freedom. <coughs> emotional freedom is unconditional. We have been talking about unconditional love. Do you have any unconditional love to anyone? 
be honest and tell me. Do you have an unconditional love? That is the another word is upasana. And there is another word in Eastern wisdom we say bhakti, unconditional love. There is no condition. Fact is that the love is always unconditional. If it is conditional, it is attachment. It is impure love. Love that leads to attachment, demand, craving, possession is impure love or attachment. Impure love hides the real self and creates the delusion. It superimposes. So the mind is always full of confusion and the delusion. One goes far from meditation. Impure love. Impure love causes suffering, grief, problem in daily living. As your mind has a feeling, oh, he or she was the soulmate and now, oh, now something has changed. No, you have changed. Your mind has changed. Attachment always changes. Unconditional, what is unconditional will never change. That is the crux of Upasana. That love is, that love is impure love. Impure love is attachment. And that love is love outside in the name and the form that love means possessing owning something forcing someone to remain attached have you felt discomfort with someone you loved before so-called and now you have a, some kind of a discomfort. Now it is better to understand what is impure love so that we can find out what is pure love. Pure love is self-giving. In love we give what we have, what we possess. Why? In the pure love, the doer is absent. Third, the demand is absent. Fourth, every time you move with the love, it is deepening, it is increasing, it is enlarging, it is expanding your mind. I know what you say is right, but, 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 the world is so cruel. And you are asking me, it is self-giving. I have a corresponding negative vibrations about the world inside. My mind needs to be removed. That is why I feel the world is cruel. That is why I started understanding the discernment. So because of the discernment, are we going to the border of Russia and Ukraine? Why I said so? Fight is going on there. So if I have an inner conflict and confusion, that is the fight going on in me. I have to remove that in order to follow and reach to the level of emotional freedom. I'm trying to make you understand this principle in two different ways. First, it is self-giving. Second is the doer is absent. Third, the demand is absent. Fourth, it is always deepening, enlarging, and expanding. 
Okay, then what happens? We drop in dissolved delusion. From there we started our journey today. We drop the wrong notion that we love someone and others do not. It liberates one from the stress and suffering. You remove the one confusion, the rest of the confusions are gone. You keep this confusion, no, you are going to increase the confusion and delusion all your life. People do not try to understand or they try to rationalize their own way, which is not possible. <laughs> so what happened to those great masters who have uh, taught this word, Upasana and Bhajan? So in those days also people did not understand. Then what those masters have what they, what the, another, did they find the another way? Yes, they find the another way. They say, no, this Upasana and Bhajan means you pray, you sit down, you worship, let everyone be happy. My mind says, no, the world is, world has cheated me, how the world can be happy, and you constantly say. So they have added the word prayer, worship, and blessing. They have added these words. So that particular process has become a release. So one meaning of the upasana and the bhaj, ah, bhakti is also the worship and the prayer. Now let us go into the etymology. What exactly the upasana means? That will make the things clear. So the word upasana means sitting nearby. That is the meaning of. But when I said nearby you, I feel jealous of you. I have a lot of thoughts of full of conflict. Oh, sit nearby God. So when we sit nearby God, still we have those feelings. So the priest comes into the picture, confession. And who takes your confession? Who is already full of conflicts? So there is no result. Don't be serious, you know, be open and understand that. Do you see that entire, the entire journey, the way it goes? So sit nearby someone with a discernment. That is why we say sit nearby the teacher, the guru, not the teacher. So guru simply represents. Guru does not represent the name in the form. Guru does not represent the beard. Guru represents moving from ignorance to wisdom. Do you see that? Is can, how can you see it when the mind is purified? That is the first step. Have you completed the first step? Are you doing the first step regularly? Do, do you see the connection? Everything is connected. So the guru represents. So to sit near guru means to do upasana. You are simply sitting nearby the guru. And you are doing the upasana because why you are listening to him or her? Why you are listening? To drop that delusion, to drop that emotional bondage. Now, in these years, did I ever talk of attachment? Did I ever talk of sex, sensuality? No. I did not talk about any or you know, any of these things. So there is a rule of a guru that who the moment you see him, he starts talking, move from ignorance to wisdom. 
That is why sitting nearby the Guru is also known as the Upasana. It is more subtle than being close physically. Close physically and sitting nearby physically has no meaning. A seeker who is doing the Karma Yoga can do Upasana. Upasana means to adore, to glorify. What to glorify? Glorify the emotional freedom. Glorify the pure love. Because if this emotional change does not take place, if the emotional change does not take place, nothing is going to happen. You are doing the Karma Yoga, you have purified the mind. But now we want a change in our emotions because that emotion redirects our behavior and attitude and action. Because you are sitting nearby, you are maintaining an awareness of the mind. You are in the mood of the self-giving. That Upasana also becomes another practice of meditation. <clears throat> so whether you say Upasana or a Bhakti, an understanding of a daily life, we'll have a couple of more sessions on this Upasana. <coughs> <clears throat> so I will relate it to our daily life and living. Another way to understand and apply Upasana is a love for the real self. But the real self is formless. How to love that real self? So I love Stephen because Stephen represents real self. I love Ashok because Ashok represents real self. So don't start thinking, don't you love me? So you are talking of love in the name and the form. So Bhakti and Upasana is an emotional offering of the mind that is deluded, that is running in the world with the likes and dislikes, with the attachment and glory. As long as this emotional bondage is there, you sit nearby anyone, even with your honey you will find some kind of a confusion and delays. I used to ask, do you love your honey 100%? 100%. If you say yes, then I, my next question, did you have any differences in the last one year. No, I had many differences. Then it is not 100%. It has caused some delusion. It has caused some attachment. It has caused some conflict. Delusion is different from sitting nearby, moving with unconditional love. I may have, I may present that this is what you have done, it appears it is not right, this is what is right. So when there is an emotional freedom, it is, it is, it brings an end to the emotional bondage, emotional dependence, 
then only the pure love flows and in that state of the pure love you are sitting nearby anyone you are totally free normally people say no i i i found the negative vibes in that person really negative vibes you are extra intelligent it is present in you it is corresponding to something deeper into your unconscious mind it has to do with your likes and dislikes how can another human being be negative are you understanding so when we keep that our emotions in the mind to that state of awareness even even take for granted even if the other person is highly negative it will not be able to influence when the sun is there how can you find the darkness sun is lit here how can you find the darkness i am very weak my mind is impure that is why i am able to attract those emotions and the feeling that is what is known as the negative vibes are you getting it my mind is weak one part of my mind is impure so it attracts and that is why i ask you how many times you have an anxiety you got upset living your life since our last session if there is no incident there is no event do you realize the state of in which you are living the life is constantly moving and there is something within you that remains in peace that remains in love that is in the mode of caring and sharing all the time you find the freedom when you wake up in the morning you have the same state when you retire to bed you have the same state when you are doing your professional activities you know we are doing it rationally logically but behind behind there is an emotion that is supporting and if the pure emotion is supporting we are removing our delusions and that will help us to reach to the higher level we'll understand this upasana how we can do this upasana in daily life in relationship to the honey in relationship to the parents in relationship to the to the strangers in all the thought in all the speech ha ah, close your eyes and close your eyes ah, i'll go in a simple way and then will become subtle what is that you look at the neck joint the mind is looking at the neck joint feeling the sensation comfort and steadiness behind that sensation comfort and steadiness there is a space space just just become aware of that that is enough
shoulder joints. You know, these two joints are representation. Are we in the state of comfort, sensation, and steadiness? But if you make it a habit, you miss it. But if you are doing it consciously, you may pick up the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. Top of the head to the toes. Sensation, comfort, and steadiness. And now it's not a big deal for any one of you in this group session. Look inside the head in the space. Be carefree. The thoughts are coming and going. Let the thought come and go. I told you many a times that this thought coming and going has You see why these thoughts are entering into your mind? Unwelcome, uninvited thoughts. Now can you understand the, the journey of the confusion? Why we have a confusion? And why the level of discernment is not there? Now even if the level of discernment is there and the thoughts are coming and going, they will come and go, they will not have any impact. They don't have any reaction. You watch them. Are you growing into wisdom? So once we have checked these two steps and i have already covered what i have covered sitting nearby sitting nearby means you are comfortable you are carefree and then with emotion feeling and the love you are chanting the mantra mentally to replace all those thoughts which causes the negative by survey Sham swastir bhavatu Sarve sham swastir bhavatu Sarve sham swastir bhavatu So not only chanting is important so that brain gets some vibrations of the sound but the meaning we instantly move to the meaning let there be a well-being for all <coughs> the mind says i have a negative vibe about that person and you are saying let there be a well-being for all including that person who has a negative vibe you do it for a few days and see what happens Your mind will become immune. You are increasing your mental and emotional immunity if you are doing with emotion. Sarvesham Shantar Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantar Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. I believe you all understood emotional immunity by the mantra. It is so powerful. If you do it with the emotion and the feeling, and it is so weak when it you do it with an emotional bondage. 
How? Oh, Tash, you keep on thinking this guy or that girl has a negative vibe. It is not going to help you in any case. Let there be a peace for all. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Let there be completeness in all. <coughs> when everyone is complete in itself, question of having negative vibes caused by the emotional attachment and reflection on those emotional bondage and its move. So we have already erased it from our mind. Let the person be 100% wrong, but you, your mind does not have that feeling. That is what is the emotional immunity. It is very important. Can it come in a day? No. You possess the mantra, the time comes, the mantra possesses you. It will happen. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu let there be auspiciousness. That in that auspiciousness, there is a moment of discernment, means the wisdom is there, emotion is there, timelessness, movement is there. As if you are flying with the peace and happiness, love and wisdom, <coughs> without any comparison, duality. We are not only understanding the entire journey of the meditation, but also understanding Upasana. But yes, we will keep on purifying the mind, looking deep inside the heart, in the space. Do you see the space? Yes. Heart chanting normally, Om Shanti. Then there is a space. You see this space, Om Shanti. You see this space. Why I say that you should see this space? At least you are able to maintain your awareness. Otherwise, the practice will become habitual. And you will say it's not working. So at the mental level and the intellectual, intellect level, Om Shanti, Om Shanti means that real self is of the nature of the peace. And I'm the real self. And then you start breathing, quick and short breathing through both the nostrils. But at the same time, the body remains in the state of steadiness. Body remains in the state of steadiness and stuff. So sometimes we think that we are taking care of the three layers, physical layer. No, the another layer is just outside the body also, the word outside. Once you are sitting comfortably and steady, mind is not outside the world due to the noise or temperature, you are totally absorbed. The first layer is the world, second is the physical body, third is the breathing, the energy. You are breathing quick and short. The fourth layer is the mind dropping on Shanti with the space. Fifth layer is the intellect. It knows every time what it knows. Real self is peace. I am the real self. You're working on the mind. Continue, please. Quick, short breathing.
Om Shanti, breath is going on, the body is steady. The world outside is not causing any disturbance. If it causes any disturbance, it is because of the emotional bondage, dependence. And leave this step, do nothing. Live within, deep inside the heart and see the state you are. No thought is returning again and again, not being repeated. You are able to maintain your awareness and you are able to be attentive to the instructions. How simple it is. And then start breathing deep, silent and slow. Nyasa inside the spine. As you inhale, move the mind from the crown of the head. Breath is dropping, mind is also dropping into the spine, reaching the tailbone. And you are singing. Um, Shanti, the dance at the base of the spine. And as you exhale, the mind rises, keeps on singing. As you exhale completely, it starts at the crown of the head. So the Om Shanti, so the Om Shanti, the deep, silent, slow breath, sink inside the spine. Again, mind will create a confusion inside. You pick up the point. You just become aware. You are moving in the space. With a feeling as if you are moving in the spine. Don't get confused. And don't start visualizing the vertebrae of the spine. That has nothing to do with the meditation. You know. That is why we need a purification of the mind. I believe you are getting it. In every session, we pick up very small and subtle points. Shanti
As to update, let me jump to another step in the upasana. It doesn't make any difference. Our mom is alive or not. Look inside the heart in the space. You see, we are making the mind very creative. This emotional mind is deluded because of attachment, likes and dislikes, negative and positive vibes. So look inside the heart in the space. Visualize your mother as if the mother is sitting on a chair in front of you. So I told you in the last session, image, location, and the word, or the mantra. So we will use it in a simple way. Uh, so the heart in the space, the space in the heart, mom is there, our mom or mother. You visualize it, you move your mind from the toes of the mother to the top of the head, saying mentally, 
what I am, what I have, what I possess, all belongs to you. I, can, I do not exist without you. I cannot. So as you move the mind from the toes of the mother to the top of the head, and you're saying, what I am, what I have, what I possess, all belongs to you. Let I merge into the pure emotion. Wait. Check the mind gets absorbed deeper. You may have a throbbing sensation. And then do it again, move the mind. So why we move the mind? That is also a subtle point. Why we move the mind from the toes to the top of the head to drop and destroy the ego into that image by saying what I'm saying, what I am, what I have, what I possess, all belongs to you. Fact is that if she did not give the birth to us, I cannot say what I am, what I have, what I possess now. Giving birth was unconditional. So we are picking up that point in our relationship. Image, location, mantra. So we are using the mantra in the form of phrases. What I am, what I have, what I possess, all belongs to you. Let me merge into the pure emotion. No preferences, no negative and positive way. I know that I'm I'm jumping to the higher practice. We'll share our experiences and see what happened. Some objection of the mind. No issue. Mind will object and you still do it. You may have, the mind wants to settle some score. No issue. Still you do it. We are looking that part of the existence represented as mother without home we could not have been doing. Check is your mind went somewhere? Did your mind go somewhere else? You'll realize that you don't want to feel the mother that way. So that is what the delusion and projection is. So we'll find a lot of opposition, but we are constantly doing, oh, it is my opposition in my emotions and mind. I want to get rid of it. With that awareness, you do it. You just become a small baby in front of the image of the mother. Immerse into your pure emotion at the time of the birth. I didn't know. She 
she never dropped me. That's why I'm alive today. So there is an element of pure emotion. So we are invoking that pure emotion. I believe you got it. Do nothing, remain as you are. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside, know your experiences, bring the hands down. How are you, Stephen? Uh, good, thank you. Um, I, um, I, I like that lesson. I, I like the idea because I, I find myself um, in this um, focus on contemplation and reflection, and it, it makes a lot of sense that it's the discernment that, 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 that's the key to this emotional freedom. Um, so, so I was, you know, just going over that concept through, through the lesson and listening very carefully to that. Um, my meditation, my experience to my me meditation was that when we closed our eyes and at the point to where we started the fast breathing, I felt this, this buildup of, I was going to say energy in my, in my left side of my body. And, and, you know, when I have those moments and whatever it is, and I couldn't actually do the fast breathing, it was preventing me from doing the fast breathing. So I, I said to myself, I don't believe that this is any buildup of prana. This is my mind messing with me and yeah. stopping me from doing this. And I'm not going to allow it. And I was immediately went into the fast breathing and it went away. So I knew that it was, it was emotional dependence, not uh, anything else other than that. And I just fell into this meditation and until your last, um, um, chant at the end was, it, I was like, Oh my God, this is over. So it was good. Thank you. It's beautiful. Beautiful. What about the mother? Um, I, I was focused on the mother. I, I was there. Um, I, I visualized all of it, but I was I was so deep into the meditation. I couldn't tell you anything else other than that. Beautiful. That is really good. You see that it's a beautiful learning that what is opposite of attachment, delusion, emotional dependence, 
feeling, have a negative feeling about others. What is opposite of all of them is the discernment. If the discernment is missing, then we create a rift in our family. Oh, you have a negative wife, honey. The way you are saying honey there. So that needs to be contemplated and reflected again and again and again. Beautiful, Stephen. How are you, Brandy? I'm good, thank you. Um, I was my my meditation was really focused and clear, and I had a I did the the mother thing was interesting because it really all I thought I mean like what you know I've experienced was that. I was able to separate myself from my name and my form because that's that's really what the mother gives you, right? Which is like the ability to be here and meditate, but it also creates a nice space um, between, you know, what we really are and what we manifest as right now. Yeah, yeah. And for that, I was grateful, but I also am not, you know, I'm separate from that. So... It, there wasn't a bunch of stuff involved. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You see that, what do we see in this meditation on the mother, and we'll be doing meditation on others in our relationship. What we see causes that attachment. What we should see causes the emotional freedom. That is what we are learning. No, I simply say, you are my mom. Okay, that's that's enough. But no, I should know the significance of the word mother or father or a friend. I don't see that essence. I don't see them, Stephen, with an eye of discernment. And that causes the attachment. So we are going to do it in, in our work. Mm. So, how about you, Samir? Uh, his connection, perhaps, you know, was cut, yeah. Sir, it was very in inward moving. And when I saw the photograph of my mother inside, and there were no feelings, no emotion, only photograph. I, I was looking at her photo, that was it means nothing yeah. was coming in my mind only her photo was there and just means one or two thoughts came in between but after that they vanished and means and it was just yeah. watching her photograph like yeah. it was the photograph of gurudev and it was the same way yeah the image we see and image triggers that emotion pure emotion and the pure emotion is able to focus the mind on that image. So we will learn that. That's a beautiful experience. Uh, how are you, Anastasia? Thank oh. you. It was very uh, light and uh, quick meditation for me. And it was so natural to, to do this mantra and to to feel it my mind showed me different people not only my mother i tried but i've seen my fiance's mother as well <laughs> so i just accept it i think and when i was uh, uh, watching my mother i i felt like i'm a want i i want to cry i think it's because of attachment Yes, yes, yes. We will also learn, Anastasia and others, my friends, we will also learn, have you seen a motherly emotion from the honey? Yes, sometime. Huh? Sometime we feel the motherly emotion from our friend, from the honey, Sometimes we seek the blessing from the God of the religion as if we claim 
just God is acting like a mother or a father or a friend. So we are going into a very deeper layer of our mind where these different emotions trigger and causes the delusion. So what we are learning, we have to remove those elements which causes the delusion so that we remain in pure motion of love. That is all for today. Ah, that is all. Thank you very much. We'll meet on Thursday.